Are you feeling lonely working in tech? Do you feel like you have nothing in common with your coworkers? Would you like to have more friends at work? Tech is the land of introverts, so it's no surprise that sometimes it can get lonely. In this video, I'll talk about how you can connect with your coworkers, make friends, and make work more of a fun place to be. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos for software engineers. Hi, I'm Yulia Eskin, a Silicon Valley tech leader and a career coach for software engineers. This is the right channel for you if you're a software engineer who wants to get promoted, become a tech lead, or just be a better engineer. And let's dive into making more friends at work. Loneliness in tech is such a familiar feeling for me. I've often been the only woman on a team of guys or the only woman in a meeting of 50 people and it gets intimidating. Regardless of how nice the other people are, it's still uncomfortable to be a visible minority. Whenever you're a minority in a group, whether it's a minority in terms of the color of your skin or gender or sexual orientation, it's always harder to fit in to find like-minded people and make meaningful connections. For this reason and other reasons, a lot of minorities feel lonely in tech. And to be honest, it's not even an issue just for minorities. I think it's an issue for a lot of people who are seeking for a more meaningful connection at work with their coworkers. As you know, people who work in tech tend to be introverted. It's not necessarily that they're not interested in connection, but a lot of times they just don't make the effort. They don't initiate the conversations that lead to friendship. So that makes it harder to find friends and fit in at work. So what can you do about it? I want to give you seven actionable steps that you can start doing at work so that you start creating relationships with your co-workers. And I think it's important to keep in mind that some of these relationships will lead to friendships and meaningful connections, but some won't, and that's okay too. The efforts you're going to make can help you find mentors, can help you make more comfortable with other people and them more comfortable with you when you do need to work with them at some point in the future. So whatever effort you're putting in right now into this, it's never going to go to waste. The first step, as awkward as it may sound, is to talk about yourself. What I mean by that is that in order for people to have something to talk to you about, you kind of need to give them something to grab onto. If you don't know anything about someone, it's really hard for you to start a conversation with them. And it's the same about you. So part of your job here in making friendships is to actually give somebody a chance to spark a conversation with you. Let's say you're on a call with your team for stand-up or something and not everybody has joined yet. This is where you can say something like, oh, I had such a great lunch at this place, or I love San Francisco, or I don't like San Francisco for this reason. Just try to infuse something about yourself so that it can spark a conversation with other people. And maybe somebody will comment about that in the call, but then the conversation can flow into Slack or it can flow into a real conversation you'll have with somebody when you're having lunch with them. Basically share a little bit about yourself so that people over time get to know you a little bit and have something to talk to you about besides work. Now, when you're ready to start reaching out to people and to start making friendships and being really intentional about it, I would suggest that you make a list of candidates. Really scan in your head right now who are the people on your team and on the broader team and the people you've met so far? And think about who are people that I would just be interested in having a conversation with. Now, don't set the bar very high. And especially if you just started a company, you pretty much have the perfect conditions to reach out to people and say, hey, I'm new, I'd love to learn more about you and your work at this company. You have the perfect pretext here to start getting to know people because you're new. But if you're not new, just think of all the people you've known so far at the company and make a list of 10 people that you would like to start some kind of work relationship with. And how do you decide on these people? So think about from the people you've met, was there somebody in particular that you felt kind of you clicked with? Like there was something they said that was interesting. You had a nice banter, a nice kind of back and forth in conversation. Another way to think about it is, is there somebody that from the work perspective inspired you like they did something interesting in the technical sense or somebody whose career seems interesting to you let's say somebody who's a tech lead on your team or another team and it's a career path that interests you in the future that could be a great person to just have a conversation with outside of the formal one-on-one -on -one and outside of like the 
regular scheduled meetings. Another good way to gather some information about the people that interest you is to go to their LinkedIn and just look at their career path and send them an invite. That actually gives you a really great pretext to say, hey, I saw your LinkedIn and it said this and that sounds so interesting and just start digging into it. But in, at this stage, just make a list of these 10 people that you would like to reach out to. Next step is to actually reach out. So how do you do that? I would say one of the best ways to do that is through Slack or whatever platform you use for instant messaging at work. But it's a platform. It's not something very formal. It's somewhere where you can just have a casual conversation. So reach out to that person and just think about something you can talk to them about, something small. Start with a little comment like, Oh, you know, you said this thing in the meeting I was, or you said something that was insightful or interesting, or this technical work you've done sounds interesting, or I saw on your LinkedIn profile that you used to work in a robotics company. That's something really cool. So basically start by showing the person that you've noticed something about them. That is a great place to start the conversation. And as I said before, if you're new to the team and you literally just started, it's a perfect time to just reach out to everybody on your team, perfect pretext for starting a conversation. So after that first message on Slack, give them a chance to respond, continue the conversation a little bit, maybe ask them a couple more questions. If you're talking about something more work related, it might be like, oh, how did you come up with that approach? Or I found this very interesting. What are other thoughts you have about this? So like try to kind of start with the topic you already started with and kind of develop it a little bit more by asking another one or two questions about it. If the discussion Discussion topic is not work, it can just be more general. I noticed you used to live in Portland. I went to visit Portland a couple years ago and I just totally fell in love with the city. What was it like for you to live there? What is something you like about Portland? Find that common denominator you have and kind of dig into this a little bit more. So after you've had a couple minutes of conversation, a couple back and forth, this is where you can say, hey, I would love to get a coffee with you in the next couple of weeks. Would you be open to that? Just like that, just really casual. I would say this Point, don't suggest lunch because lunch is like an hour and it can be a little bit more like a big deal. So first go with a coffee because honestly that can be like a 20 minute, 30 minute conversation and it can go on from there to a longer conversation but it can also stop there. Most people are comfortable spending 20-30 minutes on something social not so work related. So you won't be asking for too much of their time and it's really hard for me to imagine at this point that somebody would say no. So if they said yes send them an invite to some day or ask them like would Friday at 2 p.m. would be a good time, look at their calendar, choose like an empty spot, try to choose days that are not busy for people. And I know right now a lot of people are working remotely. Honestly, you can even do this remotely. It doesn't have to be in person. It can be a virtual coffee just to chat. Now you're at the coffee date. What happens now? So I would say since it's a casual coffee chat, I wouldn't go too deep into work or discussing any specific work that you're doing, any technical details. I would just try to use that as a time to get to know the person. And I feel like, you know, safe questions to talk about in general, it's like, where do you like to go traveling? Or how do you find the city? When did you move here? How do you like living here? What is it that you like about San Francisco or Portland or New York, wherever you are? And especially if you're new in the city, this can be a great topic of conversation saying, hey, I just moved to Boston to work at uh, this company. Do you have any suggestions about this, about that? Really just try to build a conversation, but do make sure that you don't just spend the entire time talking about you because a person wants to feel that they dedicated this time to you and you're also asking about them. So make sure to come back and give them enough space to talk about them and you can ask about their career, how did you get into this role? I'm very interested in becoming a tech lead in the future. How did you know you were ready to become a tech lead? That's a great question to ask. Use whatever you know about them to shape the questions you'll ask them and the conversation. Other good questions to ask are, what are your plans for the weekend? What are your plans for the holidays? How did you get into this industry? Especially, let's say if it's a particular industry like healthcare or crypto or financial services. So next is attend social activities. So if your company is good about having social activities, let's say Thanksgiving lunch, holiday parties, board game nights, or any kinds of events, trips, tours, whatever, 
whatever, just make a point to attend. I mean, I know that it's sometimes uncomfortable, especially if in these company events, a lot of times people come outside of engineering. I really want you to expand your mind that the people that you can meet and can become good friends with, they don't have to be in engineering. It's actually really nice and refreshing when you have people outside of the role that you are used to and outside of the people that you see all the time. In fact, when I used to work at startups, I feel like some of my best friends were people that I met at these social gatherings like Friday happy hours for the entire company that I met in the beginning of my path at the company. I had a friend in marketing, I had a friend in recruiting, in HR. It wasn't just in tech. So if you're a junior or senior engineer and you want to get promoted and you want to focus on career growth in the next six months, then please check out my website and ways that I can support you as a career coach. So the next thing you can do is organize social activities. Now you might think, oh my God, what? That sounds so scary. I know it can seem so intimidating to be the one organizing and I've definitely been in your shoes. I worked on teams where there wasn't a lot of social connection and I really wanted us to just have more bonding time. I really wanted to have more humor, more comfort, more fun on the team. I spent so long just being frustrated that nobody is doing this. Why is the team not like that? Why is it so dry? And then I thought, you know what? I have the power now to organize exactly the kind of thing that I like doing. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It doesn't have to be a big production. Here are some ideas for you. First of all, think about what is fun for you? What is something you like doing? Do you like going and discovering different coffee places in the neighborhood? Do you like getting ice cream? Do you like getting bubble tea? It can be something as simple as that. Telling your team, hey, Friday, I wanna do a coffee walk. Friday, I wanna do a bubble tea run. Basically, just just put it out there on the calendar and invite everybody. Whoever shows up, shows up. If you don't wanna do it invitation, an official calendar invitation, you can even just say on Slack, hey, I'm going for coffee, anybody wants to join? I'm going to get tacos, anybody wants to join? Honestly, just putting it out there, being the person who initiates, is going to help a lot, It's going to help so much. Most people in tech, they're introverted, but it doesn't mean that they're not interested in any connection. It's just that most people in tech, they're not the type to organize and go out of their way. But if somebody says, hey, I'm going here, join me, a lot of people will say yes, maybe not everybody, but some will. And this is how it starts going. And to be honest, even the people who didn't join the first or second time, a lot of times they'll join the third time or the fourth time once they see that everyone goes and it becomes like a fun group thing to do. And some bigger things you could do is something like movie night, board game night. Another really great thing actually is team lunches. I find that it's one of the best things to do and it's something like once a month, the entire team just gets together in person, going out for a Friday lunch or just ordering in and eating in a conference room together. It just really helps the team create this bonding and all you have to do is just say, hey, I'm gonna send an invite for first Friday of the month or first Tuesday of the month Whoever shows up, shows up. All you have to do is just start it, that's all. You're not responsible for people's experience. You're not organizing a party in any way. You're just facilitating. The other thing about organizing here that I do want you to be cautious of is that especially women often take on themselves to be the party planner of the group. And it's not a great role to be at all the time. I really encourage you to organize things, but I do caution you from taking on this role every single time, and especially if nobody else does this. This is where I think it's great to talk to your manager and say, that I think it will be great if the team had more bonding time. You would be surprised, but a lot of times teams have budgets for team building. This is where your manager can really take the lead on organizing something bigger, like an outing to, I don't know, a bowling alley, a movie night, a concert, a cooking class, something like that. These kind of things typically require budgets. So I would definitely raise it to your manager so that the responsibility doesn't all fall on you. And lastly, I'll say find the courage to start here and to organize something as small as possible just to see who shows up and don't give up. Sometimes people don't join right away because it might not be the right time for them. But really the opportunity here is that when you take the reins into your own hands, you can design it around something that is fun for you. And the last step here is to follow up. After you've had that initial 
coffee date with somebody or you connected through an activity that you organized or a social hour you went to let's say a company happy hour you've made this initial connection with someone that's great but between coffee dates between lunches how do what do you do then this is where it's important don't just drop the relationship and just never talk to the person again because the whole point is to build a friendship with somebody or to build a mentorship relationship so in between seeing each other make sure you stay connected on slack this is where you can share an article, you can tell them about some insightful thing that was said in a meeting, you can ask them a question, how your week is going, how's the last month been for you? So just like kind of keep it going, show to the person that you're interested. You don't want to be overly eager, but you want to try to maintain the relationship and talk to that person at least once every two to three weeks so that they know that you're trying to build something here with them. And then often these Slack conversations transition really quickly, hey, we should get lunch. Lunch. hey we should get a coffee hey we should do this i'm going there are you interested so to summarize the culmination of all of these steps that i shared with you today is really about trying to spark a relationship with someone you should know that the people who are interested they're going to connect they're going to see that you're putting in the effort and you're going to respond those who don't don't and that's okay too some people just want to come to work and work and they're not looking for anything else but believe me there's a lot of people who are going to appreciate the effort you're putting and they're going to see that as a signal and they'll try to become friends with you as well so don't give up keep trying keep thinking about what's interesting to you and just invite people to it and I'm telling you people are going to join so I really hope that this was useful for you the key here is to be intentional and to not give up thank you and see you in the next video